verse 17 and 18. Familiar to some, I'm sure. Second Corinthians, right next to First Corinthians. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Oh, bless his name. There ends the reading of the Holy Scripture. I want to talk to you today from this simple thought after the revival. After revival. Spirit of the living God, rest fresh on us now. Send the anointing that makes preaching effective. Open up the hearts and the minds of your people that we might hear from your word. Anoint your servant afresh. Allow the word to go forth with power and conviction. In advance, we say thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord today. It is not my intention to be before you long. After revival. After revival. I made the statement on Wednesday evening that a revival is really called for the saints of God and really called for the fact that it's really not for the sole purpose of souls being saved. Uh, an added feature, if you please, or an added form to revival are or is a soul being saved. But revival actually is for the purpose of the saints. And I think sometimes we forget that, that, that uh, revivals, because revival speaks for itself, it is a time of reviving. And you can't revive something that wasn't alive. And so God himself sees the weariness, the other things that his people experience and the things that his people go through and, and sends revival. And in revival, and those of you that were here, um, there were specific things spoken for the revival, some things were confirming what we have been hearing leading up even this last, just these first six weeks or, or more of this new year about the, uh, about, about the signs and the wonders and the miracles that God promised and, 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 and just those things that God had been saying to us. When you think about revival, you, you and I must look at the fact that, that God must love us, that he hasn't given up on us. 
I, I might be the only one, and I, I'm, I know I'm not, but, but, but it's, it's, it's good to hear that's true every now and then. But, but, but I'm so glad that God has not given up on us. I'm, I'm, I'm glad he doesn't uh, discard us like we oftentimes, hold on to your seat now, that we oftentimes discard him. Amen. I'm, I'm, I, I want to talk to real folk now that, that, uh, that, that not, not, not just that show up on Sunday and we have the look on Sunday, but I'm talking about all week long when you don't have the look. <laughs> uh, all, all, all day long when you just got your hair done and it still looks like you need to get it done. Uh, kind of got the look, <laughs> if you please. But when you understand, it's something be, because, because when, I, when, I, when, I, when I look at this, some, some of us have been dealing with situations and issues um, uh, for some time. Some of us have, have wondered, God, how, 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 much, how, how much longer? Uh, how, how, how many more of these devastating uh, things can I take? Uh, how, how, how many more of these trials that I'm experiencing? All, all, all of us have been experiencing something or, or another. All of us have been going through some things. Last week, I asked the question in the sermon, is there anything too hard for God? I, 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 I like how God approached that situation with Jeremiah because he said, Jeremiah, first of all, I want you to look. I want you to behold. Check your scripture. Uh, uh, Jeremiah 32, I believe it is. He said, Jeremiah, uh, behold, I am the Lord. In other words, he, he's saying, don't, don't, don't look for another. Don't, uh, don't look for no substitute. Don't look for anybody to fill in the blanks. Don't, no, no. Look right here. Behold, I am the Lord. He says, as a matter of fact, I'm the God of all flesh. And then he poses a question that, 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 that all of us have to ponder, all of us have to consider. And he says, is there anything? Now let your mind let your mind just 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 go into areas now where that where that with the flesh it's impossible. But he said, "Is there anything too hard?" Now this is where this is where the the rubber meets the road here now be, because this is for believers who have reached the point who have come through revival and have said, "And I'm not going back." Because I'm, 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 I'm going to be trusting God for, for everything and anything in my life. He says, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is, is there anything? In other words, the God of all flesh, he's saying, listen, I don't even want you worrying about, uh, about, about people. I don't even want you to worry about what, what they've done, what they said. Don't even worry about that. I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for, for, for me. Listen, trials, trials is, are, 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 are nothing more than, is nothing more than spiritual discipline. When we have trials in our lives, uh, God is trying to discipline us. Uh, when you grow up, uh, 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 children, your, your parents try to give you a, a little responsibility here and there, and, and if you do that well, then they can give you more responsibility. But, uh, but if, you just, if you can't even clean your room, <laughs> if you can't do the smallest chore of, uh, of, you know, it's your day for the dishes, if you can't get the trash out Tuesday night for Wednesday morning or Wednesday night for Thursday morning, if, if you can't do that, I, I can't trust you with the car keys yet. Oh, bless his name. You ought to see the faces of the young people right now. They smile, look at them scattered. <laughs> but all of us, all of us deal with some trials and, 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 and trials are nothing more than spiritual discipline for the, for the saints of God. And trials are necessary for a mature walk with God. And the trials and the tests uh, of life are designed to do three things. First of all, it's designed to purify our faith. 
Secondly, it is designed to, uh, to then produce patience. And thirdly, it is designed uh, to then perfect our character. So d don't, ever, don't ever try to run away from trials. If something, if something rocks your house, it's a good time to, to dig yourself in for prayer like never before. Amen. Uh, it's, 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 it's sad when we only start to pray or we start to do this because we got trouble. But the old saints talked about sending up your timber. They, they, and, and, and they were talking about, listen, send up stuff to, to build something up there in the kingdom. Let, let God know this is not the first time your voice. So that when trouble comes, when, when, when difficulty comes, when, uh, when circumstances come, when, when you have some things happen that you don't know what to do about, I've got some prayers. The old folks said, i got some prayers on the line. I got some words up there with, with God, and God knows my voice. And I declare, when you start to pray, when you start to believe God and trust God, you will find out that God is a prayer-answering God. Amen. Now, 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 now there's something here be, because uh, the Bible says in the, in the 14th chapter of the book of Exodus, and very quickly, God, God had delivered Israel from the hand of Pharaoh, and, and God proved his ability to lead them out by giving them what, is, what the Bible calls a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And the Bible says that God did not lead them out of the land by way of the Philistines, even though it was closer, even though it was the better way out. But he did not lead them that way. He, he led them by way of the wilderness, led them by way of the Red Sea. But God had to make sure they understood the power of his grace. And I'm, 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 I'm concerned in this day that, 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 that the saints of God that have, that have claimed to be walking with God for a period of time, I'm concerned that we have forgotten about grace. Oh, bless his name. We know the definition or, or we think we know the definition of grace, but, 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 and, and it sounds good. It's, it, it is that un, 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 unmerited favor. It's, it is, it is unearned help. And that sounds good. But when you really think about grace and understand what God, what, what lengths God would go through to extend you and I grace every single day, I think we would be a little more lenient with other people. <laughs> oh my God. I, 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 I really think we would be a little more understanding. I didn't say, I didn't say accepting their wrong. I'm saying we would be a little more lenient be, before we put the thumbs down on them. We would have a better understanding of the grace that was shown to me. I don't know about you, but, but I'm a product of grace. And I don't forget that not one day of my life. I am a product of grace. Oh, I'm going to say it again. I am a product of grace. I'm standing here because of grace. I'm standing here because his grace is sufficient. I'm standing here with thorns in this flesh, and yet his grace is sufficient. He saved you with a thorn in your flesh. Somebody ought to shout grace right there. The grace of God and, and the mercy of God. How dare us? How, uh, how dare us put our thumb down on folk? How, how, how dare us talk about folk that are down and that are out? How, how dare us speak, speak ill of somebody who's going through circumstances? If it had not been for the grace of God on all of our lives, we would be laying out on a grate down the city ourselves. But the grace of God and the mercy of God and God allows trials so we'll recognize his grace oh bless his name he allows him so God allowed Pharaoh to come after his people and, and God wanted, wanted to teach them to always rely on the power of his glory sit down in just a few minutes, but I want to talk a little bit about, about his glory after this revival. And the Bible says Pharaoh came after them and the people became frightened. He came after them and they became frightened. He came after them and they became frightened. He came after them after God had delivered them. 
and they became frightened. How can I become frightened when the word came to me last week and said the blood pulled me out? My God. Oh, I, I, I wish I had time I could work on that blood piece because, because we don't talk enough about the blood of Jesus. But if it had not been for the blood, Oh my God! That's the that's the separation of the uh, 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 of the Christian faith from 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 all the others is that is that we believe that there was power in His blood, and we believe that that the shedding without the shedding of blood forgiveness of sin, and so when it comes to the blood, that's why we may have to go back to the old school. How the, how the old saints taught us years ago, my uh, uh, mom Bruton taught us taught us to, how to, how to plead the blood. How to call on the blood, how, how to draw on the blood because the blood has power. And there's so much power in the blood uh, that Jesus went to a cross and shed his blood. And the blood is still working right now. Somebody ought to say the blood, the blood, the blood. Oh my God. It's, it's, it, 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 it amazes me here because when, when God got Israel out, now just give me a few more minutes, I'm almost done. Uh, when God got Israel out, Israel out of something because, uh, because God said, listen, I want you to take one look. Just take one more look. Just, just, just look back at your enemy because these dudes, uh, that's, uh, that, uh, that's the New Testament uh, NIV uh, Peterson, <laughs> these enemies you shall see no more. Now, if you're seeing them, it must mean that you keep looking back. But Paul said one thing, one thing, one thing have I desired, and that will I, I'm not sorry, David said it, and that will I seek after. But Paul said, listen, the one thing I'm doing, I'm forgetting those things which are behind me. We got to reach a point when revival is over that God sent a word of deliverance and set your whole house free. I don't care if they change or not. God said the house is free. God said the blood has pulled your whole family out. And the grace of God. Is what's covering us. Tell your neighbor, it's, it's nothing but his grace. Nothing but his grace. That's all. Nothing but his grace. I was in New York yesterday, and, and somebody wanted to see me. They were in about three cars up from where I was parked, and I got out. It was cold up there. Lord, I mercy, it was cold. Just thought about it. Oh. I'm telling you the truth. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I was walking as fast as I could to get to the car, and the cold, Sister Rose, hit my face. And all my jaw said, but Jesus. <laughs> Truth, I, I'm not kidding. I, I was, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> I had to keep my mouth moving so my mouth wouldn't freeze up. Felt like my teeth, felt like my teeth had fallen to the back of my throat, and, and, and my tonsils were back there clapping with each other. It was cold. Oh, I never felt that kind of cold. <laughs> but the grace of God, the mercy of God, the covering of God, if it had not been for the grace of God, you and I would not be sitting here right now. With all that we have been through, with, with all the trials, listen to me, with all the trials you've had in your life, every time you get to the house of God, there ought to be a praise coming out of you. Because nobody knows your story like you know your story. Nobody knows your dilemma. Nobody knows your circumstance. Nobody knows your situation. Nobody knows, here's the only, nobody knows the trouble I see. Nobody knows it like you. That's why, that's why after revival is over, be careful because the enemy of your soul is going to try you now. Oh, you did all that running and shouting, he said, during the revival. But now, listen, nothing to tell him, yes, it has changed. What has changed is me. I'm changing how I'm looking at things now. I'm changing how I receive stuff now. So God says to Moses, tell the people, fear not. I want you to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you this day. In 2 Corinthians, my last five minutes, Paul's trying to 
encourage the church. He said this, listen, he said, seeing that we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, he says, we, we faint not, but we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth. Then Paul tells us what the real purpose of trials and, and circumstances and trouble, he tells us, here's the real reason, he says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Listen, when you count it all joy, it builds your treasure. And the enemy is after your treasure. And if you, if you and I understand that the best and the greatest thing we can do is we can give God glory and give God praise because the enemy is after your treasure. He's after what you got in the treasure. You, you see, we've been through so much that the enemy almost makes us feel like we're worthless. But God says, no, I got treasure in you. There's some things, even in spite of what you ever did, he said it didn't mess with the treasure. Oh, my God. He, the enemy could not bother the treasure that is in you. That's what the enemy said. He's after the treasure in you. That's why, that's why he brings to our mind certain things to our spirit, certain things to our heart, and yet God says, guard the treasure. No matter what you do, guard the treasure. Even though you mess up, don't give up the treasure. Don't give up your Kool-Aid. Guard your treasure. So he says now, he says now, Paul goes on to tell us that we're troubled. No doubt about it. He tells us in the word. So, 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 so those of you who think you shouldn't have any trouble, or maybe this means I'm, I'm, maybe God's not with me. No, no. The Bible says we are troubled. We're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. In other words, our trouble doesn't, doesn't drive us out of our minds. Nor are we under so much stress that we can't serve God. He says we're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but we're not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. And Paul understood that the suffering and, and trouble and the circumstances were a part of serving God. Paul knew that God wasn't looking for those in ministry to be stars. He was looking for those that have scars, <laughs> have been through something. Oh, bless his name. That's why, that's why Paul, that's why Paul said trouble is on every side. And being perplexed and being persecuted and cast down would come with the entire territory in my closing. But before you give up on God, because of all that you're going through. You've got to read what Paul said in 2 Corinthians and 17. For our light affliction, which is for a moment, but for a moment, here it is, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. I don't know about you. I remember preaching this a couple years ago about this. I don't know about you, but I want his glory. <laughs> oh, my goodness. See, that didn't mean a whole lot to, to a whole lot of you, but, but, but I want his glory. His glory is enough. Oh, my God. It's, it's, it's all right. It's, it's, it's all right. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a runner. I, I'll, I'll, follow, I'll follow Ronnie around the church and run too. I'll follow anybody who's running. I, I, I don't mind praising God, but I, I want his glory. <laughs> Because his glory means his presence. And in his presence, there's food oil. Oh, bless his name, bless his name. I wanted to run the other night when Ronnie took off running because I, I know her physical situation. But I noticed some Ronnie only ran across here in the last the other night. In the past, she took off around the whole church around here. Oh, but I declare to you, I want his glory. Look at somebody and say, I want his glory. If I get the glory of God, I can ask what I will. And the Bible said it shall be done unto you. If I get the glory of God, what the children of Israel needed, they needed God's glory. So after the revival, 
before you give up on God, you need to look at this. He says, it says, now for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us a more exceeding and eternal weight of, of, of glory. What you are dealing with is connected to God's glory. Oh, bless this day. I recognize in this, we don't want to miss his glory. We don't want to miss God's glory. Listen to how the NIV translates this particular scripture. He says, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory uh, that far outweighs them all. If you can understand that glory doesn't come without weight. There's some trials that you and I will have, but I still have his glory. Oh, my God. There's some, there's some situations that will enter our lives, but I still have his glory. And you can praise him in a trial. You can praise him in, in a circumstance. You can praise him even though things don't seem well. You can still praise him because, because that's the part that says, I will bless the Lord. Because I recognize that even in my trial, it's going to change. And if God doesn't change the trial, he gives me a little more grace. Lord have mercy. And grace will cover everything. Grace will take care of it all. As much as the thing hurt me, God still gives me grace. As much as it sets you back on your feet, God still gives me grace. As I told you earlier at the outset of this message, listen, listen. I'd rather have his grace. Oh, glory to God. If God is saying that you can live with this because you have my grace, stand on it. If, stand on it. If God is saying you can, you can handle this because you have my grace, and grace is something you can't buy. Matter of fact, you can't even earn grace. <laughs> That's why it's called grace. You can't even earn grace. There's nothing you can do. You can't come to church enough times to get grace. You can't usher long enough. You can't play the organ long. You can't do anything to get his grace. It's unmerited. It's unearned help that comes straight from God. Oh, bless his name. So if by chance, if by chance you... You feel like God has kicked you to the curb and it seems like I'm not being blessed. Can I tell you something? Just by the fact of you saying that, you are being blessed. It depends on what you tie to bless. If you're tying a house to bless, that's not it. If you're tying a car to bless, that's not it. Oh my God. But when your mind is made up, young folk take a good look at some of the senior members who, who, who are on canes now, but, but yet making their way to the place of God. I know you think, well, they ain't got no life no more. Oh, they got more life than you think they have. <laughs> oh, bless his name. Because it depends on how you define life. <laughs> But they got more life than you think. They do. Listen, don't think because they on canes and on walkers and walking slower. Don't, don't think that they lost their minds now. Because just keep in mind now, one day, you're going to be on a cane. And we're going to swear you lost your mind. <laughs> but when you understand it, here we go. Don't get so preoccupied with your trial that you miss his glory. The whole intent of the enemy of your soul is to have you and I to lose focus. Don't get so focused on what you lack and miss out on the word. And the word says, but my God shall supply all of my needs 
according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. It will be, it will be of the utmost importance that when the trial comes, look up and see his glory. After the revival, after, now this is not for everybody because, because everybody did not come to revival. But I pray for the day of obedience where that it wasn't the pastor's revival. It wasn't the usher's revival. It wasn't the praise. It was, it, it was corporate revival called by God because if you know the history, we've had to cancel the last three revivals because of inclement weather. But this one, we ask God, please hold back the, the weather because we need revival. After the revival, you and I are going to find out as Paul said, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The Bible says that when God got ready to move Moses and the children of Israel, God told Moses to tell the people, he said, tell them that they're stiff-necked. Read your word, that they are a stiff-necked people. But in spite of their stiff necks, Moses still asked God to show me your glory because that's all I need is the glory of God. Stand with me, stand with me, stand with me, I'm done. Is the glory. Is the glory. I installed a pastor yesterday in, in New York And my, my sermon yesterday to that young man was my positioning. And I let him know that he 